Hey there, Nick Janathakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over a very quick Vim tip that'll let you set the file type of any file to whatever you like using a feature of Vim called Auto Command. So this comes in very, very handy when you're dealing with something like this file here, where we have a .aliases file. Notice how there's no file extension. This file isn't executable. And if we open it up here, notice that on line one, there's no hints to Vim to say that, hey, by the way, this should really be a shell script, right? There's no shebang or you know any special configuration. Yet down here, if we take a look, we can see that the file type is shell, everything is syntax highlighted nicely, and we also have full access to all the shell snippets. So that's uh, all happening thanks to just one line in my vimrc file. But before we get there, let me just show you one more example of where I use this pattern. So this is a Python application here, and uh, there's a requirements.txt file. So this is really just a plain text file that has a list of dependencies, but notice here that the file type is listed as Python, yet the file extension is .txt. But the main reason I did that, like this, you know, you're not meant to actually write Python code in here, but it's mainly just to get a little bit nicer syntax highlighting because, you know, we can see now the comments are a nice dark gray, the packages are white, and we also have this nice little like pinkest purpley color for uh, the versions. But if I actually set the file type to be text here, you know, everything is whited out, right? It's very hard to read this or parse out the differences between a comment and a package and, you know, the versions and the equal signs and all that. Uh, also, one more example of when you may or may not want to use this pattern of just over writing the defaults is. So I have a .env file here and you know, this, this will happen by default. Vim will detect that as a shell script there. And things look really good, right? We get the darker comments. We have, you know, full syntax highlighting for exporting environment variables. But notice how I also have a .env example file. So if I open up that one, Vim is going to detect this as a conf file. I didn't do anything special for this one. We still get the really nice comments here being, you know, a little bit darkened out. But as for the variables themselves, they, they are plain text white. Now, it would have been very easy to add one more line to my vimrc file to make this example file or all env files specifically to have that that syntax highlighting, but for me, as a visual indicator, I actually really like to see this to be plain white because then it just lets me know in my brain that, hey, by the way, you're editing the example file. This is really just meant to be used as documentation because uh, the way this works, right? It's like the, the env example file is commit to version control, but the env one is not. If I actually wanna make a real change to the project and, and have that take effect, it needs to happen here. So that's why I just like that uh, little difference in indicator, right? So not doing it on all env files wasn't an oversight. That's just the, the way I prefer to work. Now, before we get into that vimrc file real, really quick here, you know, I just wanted to bring attention here to the file command. So if you're not familiar with this one, if you run the file command against a file, it will tell you a little bit of details about the file itself. For example, we can see here that this uh, aliases file actually is a symlink here. And if I scroll up here, we can see that uh, it is being symlinked to my dot files repo. So if I clear this and then we run file on the real file itself, which is in GitHub dot files dot aliases, then the file command is going to be like, hey, by the way, you know, this is the NASCII text file. But if I do the same thing on my bash RC file, then we get a little bit more details, right? We have, oh, it's a born again shell script. It's also uh, a text file, but it happens to be executable. And there's other things here like escape sequences. So if I very quickly open up that file, you know, uh, the file command can detect that it's a shell script because there is a shebang here on line one. Now, I am not sure exactly how Vim detects these file types, if it uses the file command or some like internal like API or something like that. But, you know, that's how you can actually detect certain things about a file, regardless of its file extension, right? There's no like .sh here in the bash rc file, but the shebang here is enough of a hint to know that it's file type shell. So yeah, that's just a quick aside, I suppose. So now let's take a look here at how you can set all this up here. So I'm gonna open up my vimrc and do a search here for auto command. We'll go down a little bit and uh, there we go. It's basically these two lines over here. So for the aliases one, you know, by default, uh, bash aliases are actually going to be in a file called bash underscore aliases. So I have the little star pattern here to match that as well. But the idea here with the auto command is uh, when we open or edit a file here or read it, then for this specific pattern that we set, then let's do this specific action here. So in this case, we're just setting the file type to be sh. And uh, you know, for the Python one with the requirements of text, same exact thing, just a slightly different pattern here. And this is going to be file type Python. Now, technically, you actually don't need to do set file type sh. You can see in my dot files here, uh, another auto command, not gonna get into this one, right? But you know, it just basically sets a different Vim setting. Now, as another very quick aside here, if you didn't want the full file type to be set to Python for a specific file here, then you could just replace ft with syntax, and then the syntax highlighting would be set for this file, but it wouldn't actually be set as the file type. For example, let me just save that here and I'll go back to where I was before here and take a look at this requirements.txt file. Then notice here that the file type itself is set to text, yet we still get the advantage of the syntax highlighting here 
for Python. Now this file, you would never actually write Python code in it, but you know, if I actually do like a def foo here and then whatever, you know, it, it actually is being syntax highlighted as Python. So I just wanted to mention that really quick. And uh, yeah, that's about it for this one. Uh, let me just go back to this file here just so we can see it on camera one uh, last time here. So yeah, I mean, this is all up in my dot files. Also, let me just undo that, right? Uh, so, you know, all this stuff is committed. It's gonna be in the description if you wanna check it out. And with that said, thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions or, you know, any possible uh, ways to improve this setup, then feel free to leave a comment below. I do my best to answer all of them. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video. And if we open up the file here on line one, notice how there's no shebang or anything giving a hint to Vim that this is actually, uh, should be st styled up as a shell. Oh, just, uh.